guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about the DIY non-toxic insecticide slash miticide pesticide that I prefer, that I usually do, and that proved to work great for the past two years for me against spider mites and not only. Now for those of you who are older on my channel, I did do this video a few months back, but it was a complete fail. I tried to explain a mathematical thing and I failed. Math is now my strong point. Also, I wanted to make it short. Remember I had that section with short videos, but I'm not the short video type of person. Anyway, I heard you guys. It was a complete fail. I'm sorry about that. Taking down that video and I'm going to start fresh, tell you the step-by-step -step process, prepare the solution with you guys, apply it with you guys, and share you all the knowledge that I've gathered in these two years of actually using this DIY homemade solution. With that said, let's start by talking a little bit about spider mites. In my experience, spider mites, particularly the false spider mite, which is red, is one of the worst types of pests you can have on your orchid. They're just so incredibly tiny, you don't even notice them until they create damage, until it's pretty much too late. They practically graze on the leaves of orchids and those grazes look absolutely awful. Not only do they look awful, but they can also get infected, become darkened in color and actually lead to the leaf simply falling off in the end. With some orchids, such as Phalaenopsis, it's even worse than that. The false spider mite is the vector for the orchid fleck virus, which produces chlorosis spots, discolorations on the leaves, and is systemic, meaning that even if spider mites are gone, the virus is still present in the orchid and it affects brand new leaves for years and years. I cannot tell you for how many years I'm battling the orchid fleck virus for the past three or four years. The false spider mite does not create spider webs, unlike the other type of spider mite, the two-spotted mite, which can be kept under control with jets of water. The false spider mite is not all that sensitive to water, it is not sensitive to high humidity. With phalaenopsis of the leaves, it gets sunken into the leaf and it's so hard to remove it, even manually with a cotton swab or a cotton disc or whatever, it is simply hard to get rid of. It is also immune to insecticides because it is not an insect, it is a spider. They are sensitive to other groups of substances. And not only is it immune to insecticides and you need a special miticide for it, it also can create, or better said, develop resistance to most common substances. And I have experienced this. I did try a proper toxic miticide without very much success. I am battling with this spider mite for the past five years already and I have tried all the safe measures in the book. I have tried neem oil, rosemary oil, soapy water, alcohol, cinnamon, hydrogen peroxide. I even tried to drown them by soaking my entire orchids for 10 hours and I'm pretty sure I tried a few more other things. They have all failed. When your entire collection is infected, it's really, really hard to maintain it under control and to actually treat it. Out of all of the solutions that I tried, the oils had the best results because they acted through smothering. Neem oil is a little bit too thick to smother everything, so even if you get some of the adults, you're still left with the larvae and with the eggs. Vegetable oils being that heavy require a bigger quantity to actually make an even application. But that also leads to suffocation of the leaf and I do have a video on the matter, I experimented it, check it down below. So even if I would get rid of the spider mite with neem oil, I would also get rid of the orchid and that wasn't the plan. So after years and years of trying out all sorts of different methods of actually smothering everything, eggs, larvae and adults, I actually came across an article which was mentioning horticultural oils based on mineral oil rather than vegetable oil which as I was saying was heavy. I'll link it down below my entire thought process and all the articles that I found on the matter. Check it down below in the description. I'm not going to go into it, but my DIY solution is actually based on the horticultural oils that contain mineral oil, not vegetable oil. So if in your region you have horticultural oils easily available and you can afford them, by all means you can absolutely use those. They use paraffin oil, which is what we're gonna use today. But if you are in a part of the world in which you cannot find this product and transport is just too expensive or you cannot order it, 
don't worry, there is actually a DIY simple solution. So just so you know, I didn't invent this thing. I'm actually trying to recreate a horticultural oil in a lack of one. So with that said, let's get to work. So first, let's start with preparing the mixture. What you will need is right here in front of you. First of all, you will need water, of course. A little tip with this, do not use very cold water because the oil will not disperse properly. Go for lukewarm, rather warmish water. Don't make it hot. This will help the oil just mix around a little better and make for a much more even application. Next, you'll need a grated cup just so you know how much water you're gonna pour in your spray bottle. And then of course you need your spray bottle. Tip number two, I would go for these handheld spray bottles because they have a much smaller nozzle and they can deliver finer mist. You can try to work with something like this. This one has a pump, but in my experience, the pump sprayers are not so good. They cannot deliver such fine mist and you will end up with splotches of oil all around the leaf. That's not what you want. So if you wanna use something like this, be mindful. Try it out first on a leaf, on an orchid. Don't go around and spray everything. I would much more rather use these types of sprayers. Then you will need paraffin oil. You can find this product at the human pharmacy, not sure about the veterinary pharmacy, you can try. And you can also find it in supermarkets. In some territories it might be available, in some it might not. If you cannot find paraffin oil, don't worry. Go to the supermarket, try to find body oil or baby oil or some sort of beauty oil that contains paraffin. Look on the ingredients, you should find the name paraffinum liquidum, this being the main and the first ingredient. Other than that, try to go for as little ingredients as possible. No canola oil, no vegetable oil, added nothing of the sorts. In some products you'll find aqua, which means water. Also you will find maybe a little bit of alcohol and perfume, but that's it. Try to find a product which only contains paraffin oil and as less ingredients as possible. This is actually what we're gonna use today. I just wanna finish it up before I open this bottle. This is what I have been using for the past two years with great success, actually. Next up, you will need dish detergent. You can use any type of dish detergent. You don't necessarily need to use a mild one. I've never had any issues with Fairy, which supposedly is the strongest one, right? Because we're just gonna need a few drops of it. So dish detergent will actually make the oil mix with the water a little better and as a result make for a much more even application. And lastly, you will need a measuring spoon or a measuring device such as a dropper or anything of the sorts. These here are purchased from Ikea and in Europe you can see they have a milliliter measurement but I'm sure that in the USA and Canada and maybe other territories you'll find something that measure ounces. And of course you're gonna need the orchid to treat. So that's everything that you need and with that said, let's start preparing it. So first we need to think about the quantity of solution that we want to prepare. Let's say I just wanna spray one or two orchids. I'm going to prepare a small quantity. I have here 200 milliliters of water. Now the concentration of oil in our mixture should not exceed 2%. And this is where I filled in the last video. It's time to do a bit of math. So first and foremost, we need to work with the same measurement. You can see that my spoons here have the milliliter measurement. My total solution should be transformed into milliliters. I have 200 milliliters here, so I'm already good, but let's say I wanted to make one liter of solution. One liter is actually 1000 milliliters. So we should not work with liters, but with milliliters. Work with what the measurement on your little spoon or syringe or device is. After we transformed our measurements, we need to find out what 1% of our total volume of water means. And that's actually very easy. 1% means one out of a hundred parts. And to find out that part, all we need to do is to take the entire volume and divide it by 100. So in our case here, we have 200 milliliters, right? To find out how much oil we need to place in it, we need to divide 200 by 100. And if we do so, we will end up with the result of two. So in this quantity of water, we need to add 
two milliliters of oil. So bottom line, take your end volume of water that you want to prepare, divide it by 100, and that's your answer. This is how much oil you need to place. So now that the math is ready, I'm going to place my water in my spray bottle. Then I need to place two milliliters of oil. I will use my one milliliter spoon. So I have one milliliter and two milliliters. And then I will add just a few drops of my dish detergent. That's about it. I'm not sure how to measure this. It's just a small quantity, but a few drops should suffice. Place the cap on my bottle and agitate it. And you'll see that inside you'll have some foam. That is perfectly fine. This is what you want it to look like. Now, what I have prepared here is a 1% concentration. Remember, I divided my volume by 100 and I found out what 1% is. If I would like to prepare a 2% concentration, I would have to get that volume of oil that I previously calculated and multiply it by 2. So in our example, I placed here 2 milliliters of oil. If I multiply it by 2, I get 4. So for a 2% concentration, I would have to add 4 milliliters of oil in 200 milliliters of water. So what is the difference between the 1% concentration and the 2% concentration? Well, it really depends on the orchid you're treating. So let me tell you what I have observed in my experience with this treatment. So first of all, a more concentrated solution will obviously have more oil. So you need to think about the orchid you're treating. Typically, orchids with thick cuticles, like Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas, everything that has this really glossy, really firm leaf, they typically can handle higher concentrations. The thicker the cuticle, the more they get protected from outside elements. An orchid with a thick cuticle will not really absorb all that much oil, nor will it get suffocated by this quantity of oil. However, if you're working with an orchid with a very thin cuticle, such as Oncidiums, Miltoniopsis, and other orchid species which don't have that beautiful, glossy, thick leaf, a 1% oil concentration is more suited, simply because you don't know how sensitive the leaf is. And also the epidermis of this orchid, which let's call it the actual skin, quotation marks, is thinner and lets in more outside elements into the leaf. So bottom line, it is easier to suffocate a thin-leaved orchid with a very thin cuticle than a thick cuticle leaf. Second consideration is the extent of your infestation. If you're doing this as part of maintenance, you obviously don't need to add that much oil. A 1% concentration typically works very well in eliminating one, two, three, four, a few spider mites. If however you have a serious serious concentration or sorry infestation, a 2% concentration works better in making sure that you're actually touching all the little crevices and making sure that you're suffocating not only the adults but also the larvae and the eggs. Also the more oil you put on the leaf the more it will linger there. So if you have a bad bad infestation with mites at different life stages, it is better to have the oil sit on the leaf for longer. And consideration number three, the damage you have on the leaf. And this applies to both thin cuticled and thick cuticled orchid. So even Phalaenopsis, even Miltoniopsis, even anything. When you have damage on your leaf grazing, you will have the oil enter the leaf and you need to control how much oil enters. When oil seeps into the leaf, you will see it as splotches of darkened color. It looks like the leaf is wet on the inside, if that makes any sense. Now, depending on the orchid and the extent of the oil absorbed, the leaf can actually survive and act like nothing happened. But if it's very graced, if the cuticle is broken so much that the leaf absorbed so much oil, the leaf can actually dry and drop. So if you have an orchid with a lot, a lot of grazing, don't make a 2% concentration, make a 1% concentration. Use the hand sprayer to deliver a very fine mist, not splotches of oil. Be very, very careful with that orchid. 
it. I think the most important considerant is actually the amount of damage you already have on the leaf. In normal cases, even a 2% concentration will not actually harm leaves and will not make the oil seep into the leaf. But if this leaf was grazed upon, you would by now see splotches inside this leaf. And now let's get to application. First of all, we need to shake our bottle and we need to keep shaking it from time to time as we apply it just to maintain that oil properly dispersed in the mixture. You can spray the orchids inside in the bathroom or outside, but try not to inhale the vapor. We're dealing with soap. And even though it's not toxic, we use it all the time, it's not okay to breathe in those vapors. So mind you, either wear a mask, either go outdoors. Then we need to take the orchid and spray all the visible leaves, leaf joints, crowns and stem. Everything that is green and is not a root. So spray the upper side of the leaf, the underside, the crown, in between the leaves, on the axis and even on the flower spike. Spider mites and other pests do go for the flower spikes because they're tender and probably they're juicier and yummier. There are a lot of sugars there since it is a main focus for the orchid, just like new leaves. So spray all of these parts but do try to protect the roots. The roots will not have pests in the vast majority of cases. Pests don't really reside there. So what I like to do after I sprayed my orchid is actually flush the pot just so I eliminate that oil and soap residue from the top of the medium and also from the roots. There is a very very tiny chance that that oil will seep into the vellum and make it actually repel water. It never happened to me but since we're dealing with oils the chance is there. I don't want to take any risks. I think it's a good practice to just just flush the pot, do not wet the leaves, but flush the pot after you've sprayed the orchid. Afterwards, it's really important to let the orchid dry very well. You don't need to rinse this product off, actually you shouldn't rinse it, you need to dry it off. And for this, you can keep the orchid outside or inside in the path of a fan. Whenever we are working with water, even if it's a DIY mixture, even if it's a horticultural oil, even if it's an insecticide, we can always risk rotting the crown or the joints or the stem of the orchid. So it's really important to actually dry off the orchid very well. So number one, it's a good idea to spray orchids in the morning because in the daytime temperatures might be higher and they will have more time to dry out. Number two, if we can keep the orchid outside in the breeze, that's perfect. You can keep it there for a few hours as long as sun doesn't hit it. And the temperatures are not cold, obviously. And third, if we cannot put the orchid outside, let's place it somewhere where it's ventilated, like in front of a fan. Mind you, don't put the fan very, very, very close to the orchid if it's very cold. Due to evaporative cooling, the leaf might cool a little too much. So if in your room it's already cold, don't put the fan very close, put it at a distance. You want to still have airflow, but not very, very close. If it's really hot in the room, you can put the fan close to the orchid and everything should be okay. And a few things to keep in mind, thick, cuticled orchids such as the Phalaenopsis will tend to get a little shiny due to this product. But this shine will not last very very long, so don't be tempted to use this product or this concoction as leaf shine. If we use it excessively, we can actually damage orchids a lot. So do not use it as leaf shine. Thick cuticled orchids such as Phalaenopsis and Cattleyas will look shinier than a non-thick cuticle orchids. The oil simply enhances a little bit the natural glossiness of leaves. Miltoniopsis naturally do not have glossy leaves, therefore the oil will not enhance their glossiness. Don't overspray the thin cuticle orchids just because they are not glossy. Another tip, newer leaves will be glossier than the older leaves. Do not respray the older leaves. It's normal, as I was saying, oil enhances the glossiness and new leaves are much glossier than the older leaves. That's the whole explanation. If you're worried you sprayed a little too much, all you need to do is just touch with your finger the leaf that you think has too much oil. If you rub your finger, you will feel a little bit of tackiness. That's normal. But if you look at your finger, you'll notice it's not glossy, it's not shiny, it's barely shiny. That's what you want. However, if you touch the leaf and then you look at your finger and your finger is glossy, visibly has oil on it, it's too much oil. So what you need to do is get a soft sponge and just put dish detergent on the sponge, water, and start to gently scrub on the leaves and you will remove the oil. 
As for how often you should make this treatment, well, rule number one, not too often. It is oil, it has the capability to suffocate leaves. Mineral oil is much better than heavy vegetable oil because it evaporates much faster. I've been working with this for the past two years and so far I managed not to kill anything, so that's good. This shine will not last all that long, maybe a week and then it's gonna kinda go away. So that's why they are now making horticultural oils with mineral oils, they're just lighter, they let the leaves breathe and they actually dissipate pretty fast in comparison to other oils. So at some point the oil will disappear, but I would not do this treatment once a month or anything. As part of maintenance, which I'm starting to do as well, I would do it twice a year max. Maybe even just once a year. If you make the 2% concentration, it's enough. Do not try to reapply it one week later or anything of the sorts. If you make the 1% concentration, you can actually reapply it one week later. If you notice that you missed some spots or that you still have a few spider mites that you missed. Spider mites and other insects will pretty much constantly appear in your collection if you have open windows, because yes, they're coming from outside. If you introduce in your collection orchids without quarantining them and new plants, of course, pests will be transferred as well. You can even bring them on your clothing from outside. It's just so easy to bring spider mites in your collection that pretty much from time to time you'll always have them. The important thing is not to have a huge, huge, huge outbreak that you cannot control anymore. Having oil on the leaves will protect the leaves for a few months. You don't actually need a lot of oil on the leaves. And if the leaves are protected, even if you introduce spider mites in your environment, they will not attack the leaf because they cannot breathe, they cannot move, they cannot eat, they cannot do anything while the leaf has a very thin protective oil layer. So pretty much that's the whole point of this concoction. And as I was saying for the past two years, it has worked wonders. As a side note, yes, I have treated mealybugs with a 2% concentration on one orchid. And yes, I have treated scale. It wasn't a bad infestation, but it was nonetheless with, again, a 2% concentration and it worked beautifully. So I'm actually waiting for more pests on my orchids, on new orchids. I'm actually looking to buy something infested with scale just to test it further and see if indeed it works or I was just lucky. If you did test it, this formulation, let us know down below in the comments what did you treat with this. And before I let you go, as a little side note, yes, the spray is not toxic and it is relatively safe to the environment. It will not kill off bees and such, unless you spray the bees, but you don't. However, though, it can affect other types of spiders, such as garden spiders, even beneficial mites. So everything that is very, very, very tiny can get affected by this. So be mindful if you don't wanna damage the environment, don't spray this on outside plants. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. You know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. A share would be wonderful as well. It would really help me out. If you hated the video though, give it a dislike. That's okay. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q and A's and everything orchid related. And if you'd like YouTube to remind you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on all notifications for my channel. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.